Greetings, everyone, and welcome to another Fright Night Friday horror movie Blu-ray update. Today, we continue the quest to get a bunch of Hammer Horror films with Hammer Horror 4. Yes, so I've got four editions for Hammer Horror Blu-ray Update 4. Um, some pretty significant ones, too, actually. They fill in some pretty important gaps in the collection at long last. So let's check them out today on the Multimedia Chronicles. <laughs> So, first up, one of the editions I'm most excited about is this one. We have Scars of Dracula from 1970. This is a pretty significant one because it was the last Dracula movie we needed to have all nine Hammer Dracula films on Blu-ray here in North America. So, hooray! The set is complete. Um... Yeah, and I gotta say, this is a pretty notable one in a few ways. I mean, first off, it's the last one we needed to complete the set, but also, it's the first one from 1970 after the um, the BBFC changed some of the rules about their classifications. Um, they were able to do a little bit more in terms of violence and bloodshed without having to worry so much about getting an X rating as they were prior to this. So, Scars of Dracula is actually easily the goriest of all nine of the Dracula films they did, by a pretty wide stretch, too. I couldn't believe, like, the amount of bloodshed and, you know, just mutilated bodies and, and whatnot not in this. Um, it's definitely something to see. Uh, so they were pretty ob obviously overjoyed that the ratings had changed so they could make their horror movies more horrific. Um, also notable for Doctor Who fans, this guest star is Patrick Troughton, Doctor Number 2, in a rather significant supporting role. It's, um, I gotta say, as a longtime Doctor Who fan, kind of fun to see Doctor Number 2 gleefully whistling a happy tune as he dismembers a body with a hacksaw. Yep. Now, something interesting I should show you. Scars of Dracula was not originally released on its own. It was actually released as a double feature with Horror of Frankenstein. You may notice a slight similarity in the cover design, <laughs> or the poster design. Yeah, so these were actually uh, released together as a double feature. And uh, I like how Scream Factory basically took the Scars of Dracula half of the poster and the horror of Frankenstein half of the poster for their respective covers. So, if we take a look at Scars of Dracula, once again, it's great to finally have this final gap filled. So we do have a bunch of extras on there, which is very cool. Pretty much all of the uh, Hammer releases they've done have got a lot of extras. You can see Patrick Trout in there, looking all nice and scruffy. His character in this is quite... Uh, Quite funny. And if we open it up, no uh, reversible artwork, just some uh, shots from the film. And if we take take that out, yeah, basically just brick wall there. And there you go. So yeah, very happy to finally have this in the collection to complete the Dracula cycle from Hammer Films. Great stuff. So this was, if you're wondering where it fits in the continuity, this was the sixth Dracula film, if you include Brides of Dracula as the second. This was the fifth one to feature Christopher Lee in the title role. Uh, some fans don't like to include Brides of Dracula because it didn't have Christopher Lee in it. Personally, I like to, to count it as a part of the continuity. I don't think it really conflicts with anything. Um, but, you know, whatever. It's up to you. 
Um, I, I, I think of this as the sixth movie. Basically, when I sat down to watch all of these, I watched them all in release date order. So I watched all nine of them in the order that they were released. Even though uh, when you get to the last three in particular, Dracula AD 1972 and Satanic Rites of Dracula, those two go together, but they do kind of conflict with the previously established continuity of the other six that preceded it. Um, and then, of course, you have Legend of the Seven Golden Vampires, which is, again, kind of its own thing as well. It's like the Kung Fu vampire movie, which is a lot of fun, by the way. I highly recommend checking that one out. It was way more entertaining than I was expecting it to be. Um, I mean, I expected it to be entertaining, but it was way less cheesily entertaining than I, I expected it to be. It's just a really good Kung Fu movie that with vampires in it, and it's a lot of fun, so I definitely recommend it. Anyway, Scars of Dracula, really good. Enjoyed this one a lot. Glad to have it in the collection at long last. Next up, uh, we have a couple more gaps filled, which once again complete one of Hammer Horror's other monster cycles. We have Blood from the Mummy's Tomb from uh, 1972. I think this was actually the last of the Mummy movies they did. Now, the Mummy movies, even though they did four of them, uh, don't have any continuity between them. So they're all just standalone Mummy movies that kind of have their own take on the, the mythos and whatnot. This, I believe, was the last one that they did and features a mummified hand or something. I, don't, I haven't actually watched these yet, so they're, they're kind of next on the list, I think. But, um, yeah, so this was one of the ones that we needed to complete the Blu-rays uh, here in North America. Um, yeah, so let's just take a quick look at the packaging and extras here. I don't know why, but the printing on the cover for this seems a little bit fuzzy compared to the quality we usually get. I don't know how well that's coming up on camera, but it's just not quite as crisp as it usually is, which is uh, strange to me. I don't know why that is, but whatever. Really don't complain too much. And there's the disc art. This one actually does have reversible artwork. There we go. So we get like, I guess the uh, some of the original poster art. And looks like some, is that some different pictures on the back? Nope, same pictures. <laughs> anyway, that's cool. A little bit more uh, retro. I, um, I prefer this cover myself. I think it's a little more, a little more badass. And also just, uh, you know, more colorful, I guess. A little bit more going on. A little bit bloodier. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta love it. And there you go. So that's Blood from the Mummy's Tomb. Very nice to have that in the collection at last. That was kind of up in the air for a long time. And uh, Scream Factory to the rescue. And next up, we have the last one we needed to complete the set. We have the Mummy's Shroud. This one is from 1967. So I believe this was the last one released. Um, it's been a few months since I got these, so I don't remember specifically what order they came out in, but I'm pretty sure this was the last one that Scream Factory released, which was the last one we needed to complete the cycle of four Mummy movies. If you're wondering about the other two, uh, we have The Mummy from 1959 is available from Warner. Um, at least it was. I don't know if it's still in print, but, uh, but that was part of Warner's uh, library. And then uh, 1964's Curse of the Mummy's Tomb is available from Mill Creek on one of their Hammer Horror double feature Blu-rays. So all that we needed after that was Blood from the Mummy's Tomb and the Mummy's Shroud to round out the cycle. So now, at long last, between all three companies, we have all four Mummy movies. So yeah, as I've said before, the way that Hammer's films have been released over here in North America is a little bit haphazard. They're kind of all over the place as far as who's got what. Uh, Scream Factory's been pretty good, though. They've been uh, pulling everything together as much as they can to get, like, the definitive collection. Um, the horror stuff in particular, they've been getting a lot. Uh, they recently did a deal with Universal where, um, you may recall, I have an eight-film set that has eight 
uh, Hammer Films that Universal owned the, the dis distribution to over here. Yeah, well now Scream Factory has those, and they've actually been releasing collector's editions of all eight of those movies with brand new extras. Uh, they were bare bones on the old Universal set. So, yeah, it's, uh, again, really nice to be finally filling in these gaps in the collections. Um, very happy with uh, what Scream Factory's been doing. Uh, no reversible cover here. We do have the discard there. And that's it. Basically just a shot of the mummy there. Pretty cool stuff. So yeah, I'm looking forward to uh, diving into these and checking them out. I always really enjoyed the Universal Monsters mummy movies. So I, I'm looking forward to seeing what, uh, you know, what Hammer did with everyone's favorite... Uh, Beclothed corpse. <laughs> Last but most certainly not least, we have Fear in the Night, which is one of Hammer's uh, sort of crime drama giallo esque uh, movies. Um, yeah, so once again, Screen Factory's put out a whole bunch of these too, and um, I definitely want to pick up uh, some more of them because they look really good. Uh, this one actually does star Peter Cushing as well in addition to Joan Collins. So, yeah, pretty cool. This one's from uh, 1974. So this is very much a late-era Hammer film. Uh, this is when they were almost done in the 70s. Um, I think their last movies came out either 1974 or 75. There wasn't too many more after this. They were kind of on the way out, um, sadly. But, um, but it's great that we're getting these as well, not just the monster movies. Um, so we're getting quite a, a wide spectrum of Hammer's uh, library. They did, I mean, they did prim they were primarily known for their horror films, obviously, but they did also a lot of crime, sort of crime drama horror like this. And uh, they did some adventure films. Uh, they had a whole bunch of so-called cavewoman films, such as She and The Vengeance of She. We're finally getting She, by the way, from... Uh, I think it's coming out from Kino Lorber, if I remember correctly. And then Scream Factory has Vengeance of She, which is the sequel. A minor correction. Uh, shortly after filming this video, I went on to Amazon to take a look and see when exactly that Kino Lorber edition of She was coming out. And, well, it's already out. However, it's not this film, which is the 1965 Hammer film. No, it's actually this film, which is a 1984 film, which is one of many films from that era that are essentially post-apocalyptic road warrior rip-offs. Uh, this one uh, being a female-led one, which happens to have the same title. Yes, it's also called She, but it's nothing to do with the Hammer films. So it seems that we're still waiting for the 1965 Hammer film to appear on Blu-ray. In the meantime, we do have the 1968 sequel, The Vengeance of She, on Blu-ray from Scream Factory. Kino Lorber's put out a whole bunch of other Hammer titles as well. So between Scream Factory and, and Kino Lorber, and then the double features that Mill Creek has, you know, we're getting a pretty good selection of Hammer stuff over here on Blu-ray, finally, like years and years later. So let's just take a quick look at the uh, packaging and features here. And here is Fear in the Night. Yes, you can see Peter Cushing with, uh, I don't know, I think uh, I think he needs to get some new glasses. What do you think? Yeah, looking a little, uh, a little hard to see through there. And uh, I think it goes, it's hard to say, does it go that way or does it go that way? I guess it can go either way. And then, uh, again, no reversible cover, just, uh, you know, damsel in distress there. So, yeah, Fear in the Night. Yeah, I definitely want to uh, pick up more of these crime thriller movies that, uh, uh, that Hammer did. Very psychological kind of uh, crime dramas. Cool stuff. And there you go. So... Four very welcome additions to the Hammer Horror Collection. So just to sum up once again, we got Scars of Dracula. We got Blood from the Mummy's Tomb. 
We got the Mummy's Shroud and Fear in the Night. There you go. So as always, if you'd like to add any of these to your collections, I will include Amazon links in the description down below. Um, using my Amazon links does, of course, help to support the show and everything that I do. So thank you very much for that, for anybody who uses those links. Um, yeah, so that is it for this week. Hope you enjoyed. I will see you next time. And we'll see what other horror goodies we've got to uh, add to the collection. Until then, thanks very much for watching. Big thanks to my Patreon sponsors. Be sure to catch me on Twitch. I stream just about every day. And I'll see you next time. Until then, sayonara. Thank you.